Hi everybody, we have somebody extra to get for story time today. This is my dog, his name is Bradley. And I don't know if he'll stay here for the whole story. You think he's cute? I think he's pretty cute. He looks a lot bigger than I am because he's closer to the camera than I am. He's a little dog. He's on my lap. Now I have to tell you, I am learning still about how to hold the book so it doesn't so that you can see it and I can too. And Bradley's having trouble getting comfortable. And I notice it makes a lot of noise when I turn the pages. But just like everybody else, old people have things to learn too. What do you think about those ears? Aren't they funny? We'll see if this works. Maybe it won't. It may have an interruption. We'll see. The name of today's book is Christina Katerina and the Box. And this book belongs to someone I love very much and I borrowed it from her. And I'll tell you about her at the end. So, <clears throat> maybe this isn't gonna work, we'll see. Christina Katerina and the Box. I don't know where to hold it because I got this doggy face that keeps moving. He just kissed my hand with his little tongue. Yes, Bradley. Can you sit still? You know, it's hard for children to sit still. Now he's giving me doggy kisses. I don't know if I can read this or not. <laughs> you be still. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. We'll try again. Now he's getting on the table. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Christina Katerina and the Box by Patricia D. Gouch, illustrated by Doris Byrne. And this book was written in 1971. And there's four pictures of the box. And there's Christina on each picture. Christ Christina liked things, tin cups and old dresses, worn out ties and empty boxes, any of those things but mostly boxes, hat boxes, bakery boxes with see-through lids, and shoe boxes. Got that old lamp, too. Where is it? Mm -hmm. it? Makes a lot of noise when I turn the page. I don't know why, if I can help that. Well, excuse me, I turned two pages at once. I'm having a hard time today. Best of all, she liked big boxes, so she was happy indeed one sleepy summer day when her sometimes friend Fred Watson was out of town to see a truck deliver a great tall box. Here's the truck. The box came on a refrigerator. Oh, how grand and new, Christina's mother said looking at the refrigerator. Oh, it is, it really is, said Christina, looking at the box. And quickly she claimed the box for her own and dragged it under the apple tree. To mother, who was very neat and tidy, it seemed that boxes were for basements and trash barrels, not for front yards under the apple tree. But she decided that it couldn't hurt, it couldn't possibly hurt, for one day or two to have the big box in the front yard right there under the apple tree. Christina. She's thinking, I believe. That afternoon, Christina's father cut a window and a door in the box, and Christina painted on turrets a drawbridge and bolts for the door, and the box became a castle. And inside she put sticks on the window for iron bars, and she brought in all her cups and saucers and a lot of fig newtons in case there was a battle and she couldn't get out. And her father has a big a, a saw. I don't know if you can tell, but he's cutting with his saw because he's an adult, and she's painting on turrets. And there's the window with the sticks. For two days, she and her bears lived and played in the castle peacefully. But 
there's something in the picture. Hmm. I don't know if you can tell. Down here's the door. He's looking in through the door. Until Fred Watson came home and sneaked into her castle when she was out to lunch and ate all her Fig Newtons and she locked him in until he hollered, I'm sorry, 15 times. He is in jail. When she finally let him out, Fred gave Christina's castle a kick and over it went smack on its side. Ten bears and everything tossed around. Mother came out and saw the fallen box. I see that's the end of the castle, Christina, she said with a smile, and started to haul it away. But that's no castle, said Christina, hauling it back. That's my clubhouse. And it was for three long days. Right there under the apple tree, Christina changed the window into a door and the door into a window. She put in two benches for members and a chair for the president. Yes, the president of the club. And she painted, keep out, members only, in danger to the enemy. Keep out, members, and danger. Maybe that was the window. And she let Fred join. Then they met in the clubhouse, which was very dark when the door was closed and very secret. And they spit on a nickel and swore to be friends forever, and they were. There she is in her president's hat. There's Fred looking out. Until one day, when Fred got angry at always being the vice president, and climbed on the clubhouse roof and promised to sit there until Christina made him the president. Only the roof caved in first and Christina disbanded the club. She walked away. Look at Fred's face. Didn't he look surprised? When Mother saw the satin box, she brushed her hands together. Now she would have her nice, neat yard. Well, she said, that is the end of the clubhouse, and she tugged it toward the street. But that's no clubhouse, says Christina, tugging it back again. That's my racing car, Hermione, and I'm late for the race. Before speeding off, Christina put the top on the bottom and turned the window into a cockpit and on the side painted two magnificent curling silver horns, which she blasted at Fred every time she rounded the apple tree. For two days, she raced around the yard and she won every time. until Fat said he'd take a look at the motor, that it didn't sound quite right. And when he cut off the nose of the car to get at the motor, the car collapsed. Christina's mother was relieved. Well, that is the end of the racing car, she said, and pulled the cardboard toward the trash barrel. That's no racing car, said Christina. Pulling it back again. That's the floor of my summer mansion, and I'm going to have a ball. And she did, right there under the apple tree. She patted the box out flat and drew furniture on each flap, a stove and a refrigerator for the kitchen, a bed for the bedroom, a grand piano and a violin for the living room, so there would be music for her ball.
Then she and her bears and Fred got dressed up in gowns and high heels and they invited kings and queens and some presidents and even one vice president to come and everybody came and they danced and danced till their feet hurt and they had to take off their shoes and Christina had a wonderful, wonderful time. Looks like Fred's having a good time too. There's their shoes. And the bear has a king's crown on. Pictures are a lot of fun in this book. They're having a wonderful time until Fred decided the floor needed scrubbing and he sprayed it down with a garden hose and mopped it until the floor puckered and grew lumpy and fell apart. Look at their faces, can you see them? When mother came out a little later and looked at her front yard, she shook her head and said, well, and then, is this the end of your grand floor? What floor, said Christina, who was running by. Oh, you mean that ragged old box? Let's throw that away. Mother breathed a sigh. At last she could have her nice, neat yard. But quit, Christina said. Fred's mother got a new washer and dryer today, and he's bringing two ships down. I said my mother wouldn't mind if we sailed them here in our front yard, right under the apple tree. And that's the end. Or maybe that's the beginning. And maybe you find something to do with the box. If you're staying home a lot, like a lot of us are these days. Every time I come and read to you, I do something a little different. And I think I need a lamp over here because it's a little dark on that side. So I'll do something different next time you watch for it. This book belongs to someone named Valerie, who is my daughter who was my little girl when she got this book, but she's a grown-up woman now. And thank you, Valerie, for sharing your book with all of us. And thank you all for sharing some time with me. I hope you enjoyed this book. I loved reading it to you. Bye. Throw a kiss. Mwah.